Ready? Is it Tom? All right. Welcome to the afternoon. Um, glad to see a good crowd here again this year. My name is Wayne Stamball. And I am the project leader of the PCAD EDA project. Um, for those of you who were here last year, welcome back. For those of you new, uh, welcome and uh, thanks again for coming. Um, today I'm going to talk about the state of the project. Got to hear a little bit of that in the last presentation. Um, a, lo a lot of those things to me are not news. They're not. Some of the things are user um, training issues, I think. Um, <laughs> actually, believe it or not, the documentation for KeyCAD, and I, and I know open source gets a bad um, rap for this, but actually the, the documentation for KeyCAD is actually pretty pretty well written. It's Some of it was done by obviously non-English speaking people, so that the um, grammar may not be the best, but most of the major pieces of KeyCAD it, are documented, so you just have to <coughs> bear with that. So. Last year, I did a little bit of a brief history. I'm not going to do that again this year because there were so many questions last year, I didn't get to hardly any of them. So I'm going to drop that. If you're interested in the history of KeyCAD, you can go back and look at last year's presentation. It's all there. Um, right now, I'm going to talk about the current state of the project, the upcoming, well, actually, the development cycle that we're in now, and then you know, the wish list for way out. Um, so where are we now? We just, in November, released the stable version 4. Yay. And that's I don't know. been a project leader of an open source project, you know what a task that is. It's not the easiest thing in the world to do. It's, you know, it's not, we really wanted to have it done around FOSDEM last year, so you can see we kind of missed the mark. But <laughs> that was the first stable release in well over two years. Um, a lot of new stuff came out of that. Um, I just about had version 5 roadmap done. A lot of it's kind of ideas that we've batted around the developer's mailing list for the last year and a half. Um, I'm turning that into a document, um, so we've already started. We have seen quite a bit of uptake on the, on the user side, just because of the, the, when I see bug reports come in, I notice the names, and a lot of new names in the bug reports, so that's good. That means new people are using KeyCAD. You know, everybody uses things a little different. What work, you know, my workflow, I never see any of these bugs, never, because it's not my workflow. So it makes it a lot easier when you have a bunch of people looking at it. We've got a few new developers which is which have helped out. Um, in fact, I recently just promoted somebody to commit access to the main repo, which that hasn't happened in, I think Orson was the last one. That's probably been a year and a half now. Um, and we're also just, we also see some increase from outside donations from some of the, some of the people that are using KeyCAD besides Olmex. Is it going to be slow on me today? Yes, it is. Okay, so what was new? What's new in the, the stable full release? Uh, we have a, gra a new graphic abstraction layer that's based on OpenGL or Cairo, depends on your system, how well it's supported. Um, for PCB new, we also have the <coughs> new uh, tool framework, which allows us to do some more interesting things as far as you know, selecting components, drawing stuff. That's also been implemented. Push shove router is done. That was implemented as part of the stable release. Thanks to Tom, there's a great, lot of great work in there. If you've ever used it, I mean, compared to doing everything manually, especially if you're doing buses and stuff like that, it's really a big change. We uh, increased the working layers from 32 to 64, which means we now support 32 copper layers and 32, you know, uh, they're not all quite user definable. Some of those layers are predefined, you know, like your solder mass layers and whatnot. Those are predefined, but we have a bunch more user assignable layers for general purpose documentation and things like that for your board. Um, now I don't know what's the biggest, I, probably eight layers as much as I've seen anybody do in KeyCAD that I'm aware of. I don't know that anybody's done anything more than that. If you have, let me know because I'm kind of curious to see that. Um, uh, we've abstracted out most of the board object code. This is kind of stuff that doesn't interest anybody except the guys like me who have to work with this stuff all the time. So that, that's really important. Um, we changed KeyCAD to run in a single process, which allows us to do a little bit better. You know, we could use, you know, external communication with something like PBUS or, you know, sockets or something like that, but that tends to be clunky. And, and later on, you'll see why we kind of, we, you can still run the individual, before everybody screams, bloody murder, you can still run the individual applications as standalone executables. It's just that now when you launch them from the KeyCAD main launcher, they all run in a single process. They're not separate processes anymore. Um, 
this is one. This is one that caught me up by surprise because we actually do legal board and footprint uh, library import directly. Now the libraries we only support and we only support the new XML base. Uh, what is that? What did Eagle do? Seven, six, six, six. Yeah, when they went to the so if you have like an old binary Eagle board, you're going to have to load it with one of the newer versions and save it as. But we should do direct imports, and that's because uh, I know some people that have actually used that on some pretty complicated stuff, and it's worked pretty well. So unless you're using something like we don't support um, uh, uh, ellipses in our that's the only thing KiCad doesn't have ellipse support, so that we don't we don't import that directly. So those will turn out to be like circles that are the wrong size. But other than that, everything else should import. If not, we should. I said should. Remember I said that. <laughs> it's funny again today. Okay. We also have a Gita footprint library import. Remember that's similar. Now we only import the uh, library files, not the board files. We now have DXF file import, which means if you want to draw a complex shape for a board, rather than the keycad uh, polygon editor, you know, doing yeah. arcs and saying line segments is kind of difficult. You can directly import a DXF now, and that you can place it on the the board outline layer, and boom, you got a board outline. So th there are some advantages to that. Um, we now our, our footprint symbol in 3D model libraries. We kind of split that out as a separate sub project under the KiCad umbrella, and that's maintained on GitHub. And that's really going well. We they, they've cleaned up our libraries. They're the, the group that does the libraries. They've really done a lot of work, good work. Our li our footprint and some symbol libraries and our 3D model libraries are really. I mean, if you would ship a, a binary version of KiCad, packaged version of KiCad, that would basically almost triple the size, just the sheer number of libraries that we offer now. So that that's good. Um, we now have that one of the request one of the weird requested features from the the commercial world is they didn't like we always had like a, a pre can uh, uh, title block and, and you know formatting border. We now have. A, you can customize that and make it whatever you want for if you have a commercial you, know, you have to have everything laid out in a certain way and your your title block has to look in a certain way for your corporate title block or whatever that's all editable now um user documentation was split out we used to maintain that as part of the source code we no longer do it's um we also converted it from odt which was a pain to uh, 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 Translate, so we converted it to ASCII doc. This stuff is all. This is hosted on GitHub, and it's updated every time there's a, a pull request gets submitted. The build request, you know, the build fires off, and within 24 hours, we have our, our documentation is translated. I'm not sure how many languages there are, but the, within 24 hours, the documentation is up to date. So that's a good that's a good thing, and that and that's going a long way to help things out. Um, we now have a preliminary. Uh, Implementation, it's not the easiest thing in the world to use. It requires some uh, interesting setup in, in the schematic editor to get it to work. But we now do uh, two different uh, tune pair or differential pair and two length routing, which if you guys are doing like transmission line stuff, you'll know that's really helpful. Um, we've also in the past we've been we've, you know, we've taken some bloody noses for configuration. There's a few new wizards that, that set up. One does allow us to download 3D models from GitHub instead of having to do it yourself. Instead of you having to go get, clone, you know, and then do your normal get, you know, update your local repo, we have some stuff set up to do that for you, man, you know, allow you to do that if you don't want to have to dig your, you know, have to dig in and learn git. Um, here's another one internal that you didn't see that, that's changed things and helped out a lot. We now have a unified geometry library. In the, up until this last go round, we were literally using I think three was it three Tom three different geometry libraries to do various things inside of KiCad, which is ridiculous. So we've kind of standardized on one, found some bugs, got them fixed, and so we now have a single geometry library, which we fixed some of the DRC errors, which I'll talk about in the next um, in the things that we're working on in the future. Um, and we improved, we, we've added a lot of search features to both the uh, schematic editor for simple libraries. Um, we also converted the uh, website over to ASCII doc, <coughs> and uh, it's, this, it's done the exact same way as the documentation. It's automatically generated whenever there's a commit change and it gets updated right away. Um, we also moved the, the source translation files out, and that kind of is a standard. We let that kind of flow independently of 
of the, the source itself. There's, usually, there's a stable version, which people can contribute to, and there's also the current testing version, which you know people can uh, keep that up to date as much as possible. Okay. I, there's a lot of little things that I missed in there. I was, those are just the big pieces. And, and I know if you look at what was there, the most of the work happened in PCBU, the board editor, okay? And the schematic editor kind of got left behind because there was so much work and development going on on that. This development cycle, we're going to kind of try to turn and focus more on the, the schematic editor because there's some features we need to get to get that to happen, the schematic editor, editor has to happen. And the first one I'm working on now is basically the internals of the schematic editor are pretty rough. So I'm refactoring all that as, as I've been working on that for about a month and a half now. And it's in progress. Um, we're going to move to an I.O. plugin manager for schematic for the schematic editor to provide um, for method for loading, uh, simple libraries, and schematics. Very similar to what we do in PCB new now. Um, we're also going to port the uh, schematic editor canvas to our graphics abstraction layer, so that'll be a big job. Um, we're going to use the new tool framework as well, which we implemented in PCB new. Um, we're also going to change the file format. One of the reasons we've held off on doing anything with the uh, uh, file format is because we want there's all these other things have to happen before that happens, and so we're going to do that in this um, go around, and that will include the uh, support for some of the new features for the schematic editor, which I'll talk a little bit, bit about here. Um, we're going to add Git, we're going to add and improve the GitHub support, or we're going to add GitHub support for accessing component libraries similar to our footprint libraries. Um, we're also going to try to abstract some of the schematic code out. We, we've done it for the board code. We're going to try to abstract out some of the, um, the schematic code so that there's a DLL. So, and then that'll give us the opportunity to port, uh, Pyth you know, add Python support for um, Uh, Python support for schematic objects. Not right now. We have Python support for the board objects. You can do all kinds of neat, nifty stuff. We got guys that generate all their footprints with Python scripts. They don't draw anything out manually. Um, schematic net highlighting. One of the things that's been requested is like when you click on the board, you'd like to see the net light up on the. Um, that's part of the two-way information exchange between the board editor and the schematic editor. Uh, we'd like to implement that. Um, we need we need to uh, improve the user interface a bit. We might we've talked in the past about doing lots of different things here. It's not the highest thing on the priority list, but it, it, it would be handy. Um, one of the big things we get banged on for anybody who's used uh, KeyCAD is our library management system. Yeah, editing uh, symbol and footprint libraries. The editors aren't very good, and that, I think that's a big thing we're going to work on the, this go round is. To, how we manage libraries, how you know you copy a footprint from one library to the other, cut and paste kind of thing, that needs to be worked on. Um, we also uh, want to do a port of the WXDC canvas because what we found is in some cases the OpenGL support and the, the Cairo support is very slow. If you try to use the Cairo canvas to render, I, the, I, have, I haven't used it on any platform where its performance is acceptable for all but the simplest boards. Um, and, and if you're if you're a Linux purist, sometimes the OpenGL support doesn't work, so we're going to have to probably <laughs> we're probably going to have to backport WXDC. As much as we don't want to do that, we'd really like to stick to. I, I think at least in the short term, I don't think we have a choice. It's one of those things that we thought maybe we could get by with it, but it's, I, right now I don't have a lot of confidence in that, so we're probably going to have to do that. Um, we still have, there's still some work to do, and I think this is probably one of the things that Tristan talked about in the previous, is there are some features that aren't implemented yet in the, the GAL canvas that are, you have to switch back over to the old legacy canvas. Like <clears throat> some of the auto placement tools and auto router tools, not that many people use them, but, and there's some slight differences in behavior between some of the tools which frustrates people. Um, so we're gonna do that during this, uh, cycle. We have uh, a bunch of improvements to the 3D modeling library stuff. That's all, That works underway right now. Um, I just found out somebody's working on this one at the top, um, complex pad types. Uh, so that could be interesting. Uh, we'll see how that goes. Uh, 
we're going to add pin and gate swapping. And hopefully this will be a forward backwards <laughs> kind of thing where you define the symbol as part swappable or unit swappable, gate swappable, pin swappable. Um, in the board editor, you're, as you're laying out, you say, oh, well, it's going to cause a bunch of traces to cross. I'll just swap the pin, swap the gates. And what we'd like to do, that's a pie in the sky maybe, um, is backwards annotation. So as you change the thing, change something in the board editor, you don't have to remember to go back and back, you know, all again and out. Because now you have a disconnect between your net list and your schematic. So we're looking to do that, this go around. Um, we need, we, we do have, I will say, uh, we proof selection when dealing with multiple objects. Right now we just have simple rectangular uh, select, block select, what's typically known as block select. We'd like to do individual select where like you hold control down, key down, you select 10 objects, doesn't matter where they are, and you can just drag them wherever. We, we really need to get something like that in, uh, in place. We need to improve, we know we need to improve the DRC checker. A lot of that kind of, kind of fell into place with the, uh, the Polygon library because that that is the DRC checker effectively. You have to get, and because we were doing it in multiple ways, we were running into clashes. So we know we need to fix that. And just general editing um, improvements here. Segment endpoint snapping, when you're modifying an arc, modifying a segment. Right now it's not the easiest thing in the world to do. Uh, keep out zones uh, in, on boards and footprints. Uh, that's been discussed, and, and uh, if you were here for the last presentation, you heard about that. Um, uh, support for vias and zones. One of the things that we don't do real well right now is these guys do uh, high-speed stuff, and you need stitched vias acro across a, a, a big ground plane or a power plane. We don't handle those. I mean, I, I'll, I'll flat out state we don't handle those very well, and that's going to be part of this next development cycle to, to make sure we handle those, uh, those better. Um, we have we now have a wild card regular express uh, regular expression searching in our footprint and symbol selection, or we're going to add them to the footprint, and they're already in the symbol uh, find dialog. If you if you got to have regular expressions, because some people just got to have them. <laughs> port, we want to port Gerber view over to the new canvas, the new graphics abstraction layer. Um, we also. Oh, I already talked about that. Uh, remove the, the build dependency code, which is all, that's already done. <coughs> with that. We used to build, one of the things, the co compiling key CAD, if any of you have ever done it from source, it's not for the faint of heart. Because, and over the years, we, you know, we've added scripts, CMake scripts to pull a library down and build that library, apply patches to it. We, it was just getting too ugly. Our build code was, look, was awful. So I, that's gone now. So we just <coughs> builds a key CAD source. Um, and uh, last, but because all the cool kids are doing it, <laughs> we're, gonna, we're talking about, since we're hosting so many of the sub-projects now on GitHub, we're talking about moving the KeyCAD source over to GitHub. That's not a slam dunk for all you people who are excited about that because there's, there's a lot more to it than that because we have such a legacy of um, bug reports and whatnot. I don't want to lose any. I, many, most of you probably weren't around. I went through it the first time we moved from SourceForge to Launchpad. And it was not a seamless transition. It was not an easy transition. If, it, if it, we, we were a new project, I, it would be a no-brainer, but it's not quite that simple. Um, so, and as project manager, I get to deal with all that nonsense. So that's why I'm, I'm just trying to hold everybody back and you know, let's make that make sense. Um, the distant future, after, that's a pretty ambitious development cycle. I can't, this, or development cycle for this go-round, whether we'll get all that done or not, I don't know. The goal is to try to have something ready around FOSDEM next year, but we'll see. I mean, I, I like anything. I it's, we're pretty we're very much volunteer oriented, so I can't sit there with a the club and make people get stuff done. I can only say, hey, let's focus on this and this. But if you've ever worked an open source project, it's very much an itch to scratch. You know, people will work on what they want to work on, and um, and that's okay. I'm you know I understand that. That's not lost on me as a. I'm a volunteer myself. I don't get paid to do this, so I, I, I get that mentality. Um, so in the distant future, we'd like to do some improved microwave tool support for the board editor. I know there's some people who have talked about that. Um, commercial, ex at least export to the ODB++ format. That's star I'm starting to hear people rumble about that for vendors when they have their boards made. Some vendors are starting to go to this now. Just, I mean, Gerber's still the de facto standard for getting boards made, but there's some people that are starting to want to see that, so they're, we may have to 
suck it up and do that at some point in the future. I uh, talked about Python scripting support for schematic objects. Um, I want to move to a plugin based architecture for a lot of our big tools. And the reason I want to do that is one, it gives a way, a way for us to experiment without touching the main tool. It also gives us a chance to do like specific design specific tools. Somebody who's trying to do like low noise analog is going to have a different set of layout needs than somebody who's doing maybe say high speed digital, you know, or you know, or microwave stuff. So there might be some advantage to have a plug-in router that's specifically geared towards that type of design, and that allows us, like I said, and then allows us to do competing things too. Maybe somebody thinks they can do it better. Hey write a plug-in if you can do it better, and maybe you win, maybe you don't, I don't know. But it makes it, I think we need to look at that for that type of, uh, for at least the big chunks of KeyCAD, you know, the, the big stuff. Unit testing, we're bad about this. We just put some stuff in place to, you know, throw that, to throw it together, but nothing's been done in that area. This one's a big one, and, <laughs> and I, I watched the, a lot of the presentations today for simulation, I think we're a long way off from that yet. I mean, as much as I'd love to get you guys there, it, 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 if anybody's ever, anybody plays in this space knows it's not a trivial task. And the, the um, schematic, since it primarily rests on the end of the schematic editor, schematic editors to do board design and schematic editors to do simulation aren't quite the same animal. They're close, they look the same, but their end goals are different. And so we, we have to really kind of evaluate how we want to handle that internally. So that's, that's a big big, big task, but I would like to do it. I have, I'm not going to lie to you. I'd love to be able to do that. Um, and then we'll talk about collaboration with some of the other teams. Um, you know, there's a lot of people doing similar stuff. It might be nice to come together and, and, and have a one better tool instead of a bunch of, you know, dissimilar tools where we can cooperate and, and share code and whatnot. So, um, that's it. Um, I, oh, right there. Uh, what happened to it? Uh, yeah. uh, thanks to everybody who showed up, um, and I want a special thanks to Javier and CERN for making this possible. They are, they give a lot of time and effort to make my trip here possible and this room possible. So thanks to everybody. It's, it's right now it's geared toward GitHub. Um, somebody could write a plugin to use Git. I mean, I, there's nothing stopping us to do that. And one of the reasons we kind of went to that model, well, for one, somebody wrote it. It was their itch to scratch. They were more interested in that than doing it locally. But it, it does it is nice that the libraries are, if you use the GitHub plugin and, you, and, and for your footprint libraries, at least our standard libraries, they're always up to date. You, you'll have the latest and greatest as they come out. Every time you fire up the, like say you want to assign a, a footprint to a, a symbol and use the GitHub <coughs> plugin, um, you're going to have the latest grace. I'm, so, I'm sorry, the question was, is that Git integration or GitHub integration? Yeah, because I like the idea of Git, but, but uh, not maybe just GitHub, but more generally Git, so, so that's why. But I it's don't. certainly something we, we could think, we could talk about. <coughs> it's been talked about in the past, just doing a straight up Git, you know, so all your, so you're, any any place that use the use Git should be able to do it, or you could even just do your own repos on your own computer. I mean, you would have to, they would not have to be remote. Um, so yeah, it's and been talked about. Is that limited to just the libraries, or is that extendable to the schematics and board labs? Right now, it's just right now the board. It's just the uh, footprint libraries that, that that's extendable to. But I suppose we could do it for the board and. I know a lot of people use uh, version control software to maintain, because our, our text files are plain text, so yeah, version control makes sense for maintaining, you know, your board files as well as the libraries. Any other questions? Okay, just thank you, Wayne, again. And if anybody...